Hey, what's up y'all? Talent Scout back with another video. And today we're talking about new potential stimulus, care, packages, acts, money. And if you'd like to learn more about who would benefit and who would be impacted, uh, how much it would be, for how long, and the potential ramifications for dispersing these funds, uh, please stay tuned. So this morning on May 8th, probably yesterday morning by the time this video is up, I'm a little slow with the process, but this morning, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Markley proposed a new potential stimulus care package under the name of the Monthly Economic Support Act. I guess MESA for short, pretty sure that name is taken. Uh, let's redo the name. But the reason that they proposed this new bill, because they believe that the $1,200 checks that have already been distributed are just not enough for families to get through this economic downturn in this pandemic, which, I mean, I totally get it. Because depending on where you are, that money stretches at different amounts. Like for me, for an example, I live in the Bay Area in California. I just rent a master bedroom and that alone is $1,350 a month. So I can totally understand how $1,200 just wouldn't cover it for people that have lost their jobs and don't have savings. So it's like, I totally get where they're coming from. So here's what they outlined the new package to look like. So if this act were passed, who would be included and who would benefit from it? So it's pretty liberal. So it's pretty much all, I guess, legal US residents. Pretty much, yeah. And don't bully me for my writing. I'm bad at it. I used to get in trouble for it when I was little. I, I just can't write. And so yeah, leave me alone. And leave me alone about my hair. I'm being socially distanced and responsible. And you're not if you've got a fresh fade. So yeah, take that. So all legal US residents, making less than a hundred thousand dollars per year so if you make that you're gonna get two thousand dollars per month and if you're married and filing jointly so under 200k you would be getting four thousand per month so like the cares act there's also a benefit for the children if you have dependents with you as well so instead of five hundred dollars per child the benefit is now up to $2,000 per child up to three. So that's actually a lot of money. So that's 6,000 kids. So just say like a US family, right? If you're married, have three kids, that's making $10,000 a month. Oh, I'm just gonna do, eh, we'll just do 10K. That's, which pretty much, it puts you on track to making 120K per year which is roughly double the US average income of a family for $62,000. So I'm pretty sure this right here is what's gonna be the biggest thing holding it back. Like why should people be making roughly double what the average person makes while not working? I mean, I get that thought process, but you know, it's just trying to help people out, help them, you know, pay their rent so that you don't have massive foreclosures, helps them just to stay open because they're still gonna buy things. It's a little complicated because no one's working. You can't really do the services that are being paid for. I don't know. I'm not an economist, so I don't know the entire and all the intricacies that go along with it, but that's the gist of it. People can make up to $120,000 per year. And this is where kind of like a moral dilemma comes in because people, like say families making 200K and if they had three children, you're pretty much throwing a, an extra 120K on top of that. So it's like morally, does it make sense to pay someone $120,000 and they already make 200 k Because, I mean, if you're making 200 k a year and live a semi-reasonable lifestyle, even if you lived like here in the Bay Area, you could be pretty fine under that amount of money. So it's like, is that really helping them pay their necessities? Or is it just like, a, ooh, an extra 100 bands? I'm gonna go buy like a maxed out Model S. See, like, I feel like that's where it's gonna have an issue getting passed, but I mean, if it did, that'd be pretty dope. But personally, I'm an extra 2,000 bucks a month just for me. I, I wouldn't say no to that. That's more than my monthly expenses and my work money would still uh, No, just kidding. See, I, I'm part of the problem. But yeah, now that I think about it, that's a lot of money. Hold up. Hey Google, what is the United States population? In 2019, the population of the United States of America was 328,239,523. Cool, so 328 million, I'm gonna call it 300 million even. Reason why is because, I don't know, there's just gonna be some other thing in there. There's just a lot of things that go into it that I just don't think the entire population would be eligible. I think 300 million is close enough to the amount of people that would actually be uh, 
included in this act. So 300 million times 2K, because even the dependents, it's roughly $2,000, right? So let's see, let's grab the orange marker just because I don't have a red one and this is the number Republicans are gonna look at. This one's gonna scare them. So we've got six, because obviously, and then let's see, we'll take all the zeros. So zero, 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 zero. Zero, zero, zero. Wait a second, that's we need more zeros. Oh, wait, whoa. So that'd be 600 billion per month? That's a lot of money. Wait a second, okay. So, just say this act lasted for six months. That would be, that's 3.2 trillion, wow. Okay. Yeah, I oofed. Not 3.2, 3.6, but see, I'm not your leader, so I can make these, these mistakes. All right, yeah. Oh, Trump also talked about he's not passing anything until it's a payroll tax cut. I'm all for that too, so this plus payroll taxes, that's a lot of bread. Okay, back to the rest of the video. And if you remember, the entire CARES Act was roughly two, I think 2.2 .2 trillion? So a trillion dollars more, that's assuming it's only six months if it lasted a year, double, or however long this pandemic lasts. So, wow, that is a lot of money. That's what's gonna be holding this act back just because the amount of money that goes there. I wonder if that would actually happen. And the whole thing is like, it's never free money. We'll have to pay it eventually in taxes, but I mean, that's kind of why we're in the tax hole that we're in right now, because the boomers kind of, you know, mess up things for us, you know, us millennials and Gen Zers, and oh, we're really messing up for the kids below us. Ooh, that's a tough one. Let's talk more about it though. So will this act actually get passed? I really don't know. Okay, because there's a couple ways this would go. Like one, if this actually passes, would kind of get rid of the whole stigma within our society about a universal basic income. And I mean, I mean, we've all seen that article from earlier this week about Finland and their new UBI. I'll post the link to that in the description if you guys want to check that out for yourselves. I'll also post the link to where I found this potential proposal in the description as well. So you can just check it out, get your own info and research for yourselves, even though all media is fake news these days, but that's a different video. <laughs> but um, yeah, that can really get rid of the stigma for UBI. Personally, I used to be very big on the whole, like, how would we pay for it? But after I saw the last <laughs> couple months and just how the feds print money willy nilly and we can just pass anything, I'm really not too worried about it anymore. Cause it's like, well, it could potentially help people. I mean, we need to keep our businesses open as well. Like we can't let the big businesses fail, even though they've done some really, really shady things, like really shady, like all those stock buybacks to give big bonuses to the, to the C-suite. I'm not for that, but we can't let those companies fail. The reason why is they employ millions of Americans because half of US employees work for big companies. The other half work for small businesses. We have to take care of both because right now we're already at 14% unemployment as of today, this morning. I'll link that below as well. But 14 is a lot better than 50%. So yeah, we got to take care of both of them. That's uh, uh, one of those catch 22s right there. Um, but yeah, having the UBI in place, that would give at least the citizens an opportunity to pay their bills, which would keep the housing market semi-stable because we can't really have the landlords not have their income either because if they're the ones that own the house, if they get the house taken away, what happens to the people that are renting the place? You know, like, we gotta protect everybody because you can't just help one group and not help the other because we're all so deeply intertwined. Everyone's gonna need help. So the way this bill is com currently formulated, I really doubt it because it's 600 billion a month maybe but i just don't see it and then the potential of inflation but are we allowed to be inflated since we're the reserve currency of the world could we just say no to inflation because you know simple market economics it's like if there's too much money all the prices of everything else have to go up but what if we just did it i don't know if that's a thing i don't know if anyone's ever decided that before and all this new debt that we have china's got a habit of buying all of our debt but we've got our big old trump -a lump that's continuously you know saying very questionable things to to china and who owns our debt they could potentially call our debt 
but can they really call our debt because it's like can china actually whoop us if there were to be a war there's just so many things that's going on but um bringing it back to mesa yeah solid i don't know but if it happens i'm taking my two thousand bucks and i think i'm gonna finally pay off my student loans I wasn't gonna do it. I was gonna do the whole minimum payment thing for the 10 years because, I mean, you know, opportunity costs. I was like, eh, I could just write a check and pay off, but I don't want to. But if it's money that's not really mine, then I'll do it. And see, that's another thing. Should I even receive that? Because I'm not in the worst situation ever and I'm just looking at ways to leverage this money further? I don't know, man. I mean, I want it, but is that fair? But what defines fair? And that's today's video. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Ask some questions, make me think about some other stuff because I'd love to have a conversation about this one because I don't have too many people to talk about this with. And uh, yeah, you might give me ideas for additional videos in the future. And man, this world is just wild, y'all. <laughs> All right, peace.